Hey there, Cancer. How are you? We're going to get started on your psychic tarot reading for the month of October. Cancer, let's begin your reading by choosing a tarot deck. And I think I want to use these two over here. These are the Golish Garb Terror Tarot and the Edgar Allan Poe Tarot. All of the decks on my table are Halloween and horror inspired decks in honor of Halloween, of course, this October. Cancer, how's it going, my Krabby Patties? I'm really happy to be here today doing your reading, Cancer. Let's begin your reading by taking a look at your biggest challenge this October. Holy Spirit, we are connecting with the zodiac sign of Cancer. What insight, foresight, guidance, revelations do we have for the sign of Cancer? I keep seeing the devil, guys. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear that I am feeling right now. Um, it feels like my hands want to go like that. Cancer, let's see how that ties into your reading. What is your biggest challenge this? Oh, my goodness. What is your biggest challenge this October? Could it be the death card? Could it be the death card? I honestly just want to get the death card and put it there. Do you see how the deck? OK, look, there's the devil. I, I, I can, I, the, there's something happening with those of you that I am connecting with. I mean, there's always something happening, but there is uh, a lot of intensity, a lot of passion, a lot of build up energies that I am feeling so much so that they're, it, it, I feel them like at the pit of my stomach and I feel my legs going like that. Did you see the deck, the way it just, uh, it's, the, even the deck feels uh, erratic. So there, there's the death card. And, you know, I said, let me just, I feel like the death card wanted to, wants to come out. But since I didn't pull it out, I said, let me just, you know, put, put the deck back together. And when I did that, it, we could say broke off. And look, there's the death. There's the death card. We also have the hermit here. And we have the devil. Do you see the devil there? I was seeing the devil. Look, there it is. It came out. Okay, Cancer. Your biggest challenge this month of October is the end of a situation. The end of a major cycle in your life. The death card. Here in this card, we see the Headless Horseman. So what is the story behind the Headless Horseman? Sleepy Hollow, that's from Sleepy Hollow. The story Sleepy Hollow. Hmm, I kind of want to read out of the book. I wonder if the, the story has some significance. And right next to it, we have the devil. Yeah, your biggest challenge, my dear Cancer, is um, letting go. It's, it's letting go of something. This could be a relationship. It could be anything in, in your life that uh, is experiencing a major change at this time. And it's really difficult to perhaps accept that process that um, to to take that in with the devil it tells me that uh, perhaps you are holding on really tightly you feel like you can't let go you feel like you can't release now i feel like this is a big problem guys obviously because the devil is here in this devil we see two lovers so for many of you this is about a relationship the headless horseman is about something that comes back to haunt you in i guess you can say isn't it i'm sure there's more to this story but it comes back to haunt this headless horseman so for many of you there perhaps feel it feels like there is 
maybe something haunting you, coming back to haunt you. Now notice that this is in the your biggest challenge placement. So this is, you know, you experiencing all of this, like these feelings, like it's so, it's hard going through this. It's hard to let go. I can't let go. I can't let go. Um, or this is somebody else feeling this way and uh, they are your biggest challenge. But I'm reading it as if, it is you, my dear Cancer. Apply it to your situation. Death and the devil. What I've been seeing head on fire everywhere. H uh, hair on fire. Do you see the jack-o'-lantern there? You, we could say, it, you know, it's, its head is on fire. I saw it in the Scorpio reading. I saw it in the Taurus reading. That is of significance because I am just seeing it everywhere in in different decks. I saw it first as a vision. I then saw it in Scorpio's reading in another deck. And now I'm seeing it here with you. So hair on fire. Let's look it up. That is something like people say my oh like my hair is on fire it means that uh, they're under a lot of stress hair on fire meaning oh i had um oh here we go i had it on airplane mode for whatever reason it says impassioned wild crazy rage filled and frantic yeah it goes with what I am feeling, guys. There's um, a lot of passion. There's wild uh, emotions. My head is itching like crazy. Somebody's feeling rage-filled. Uh, somebody's very frantic. And this could certainly be you, my dear Cancer, because there is um, a major change happening that is incredibly difficult. It is an ending there is a release here that is so hard to to do and as a result uh, there is a sense of denial of holding on even tighter of allowing negative feelings and emotions to just consume oneself and well as a result i i feel like there is um possibly uh, danger, actually, possibly danger. This is your biggest challenge. So keeping, you know, a certain strong, passionate, wild emotions under control, that is a challenge this month of October some jealousy, some anger, some rage, uh, a desire to want to hold on tight, a desire to want to control the devil. Do you see the stomach there? There's two snakes. So that that to me is just representative of negative motivations because they're inside the stomach, the solar plexus. Yeah, there's a lot of negative influences, guys, that it uh, that are easy to to allow in, that are easy to overtake. This is your biggest challenge, my dear Cancer. Releasing, letting go, in peacefully peacefully let's take a look at the recent past and how that ties into into this cancer recent past let's let's take a look at the recent past what's in the recent past Cancer, recent past for Cancer. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Let's get one more card. And then we have the Queen of Cups. So this is the this is the recent past, my dear Cancer. I feel like you have spent uh, a lot of time investing into something that you really wanted to to see grow and, and expand that is the seven of pentacles you've been working very hard the thing about the seven of pentacles is that uh 
well, you 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 might or you might not get the results it is that you want the seven of pentacles so this is this is you i feel somebody in, in the past really putting forth effort here we see a man and a woman so let's say that this is a relationship there is um I'm hearing a lot of effort uh, by one person to really try to work and um, on this relationship, this connection, really investing, really trying in hopes that they will get a certain outcome, seven of pentacles. And then here we have the queen of cups. That guys, I'm getting that, you know, it, it was not good, okay? I don't I don't feel like that in the intent there wasn't good. The reason I say that is because this Queen of Cups, it just look, the moon is really highlighted in the back, which reminds me of a lot of um, there is a, a lot of subconscious motivations here, a lot of subconscious motivations, a lot of fears that were driving. I'm hearing your your behavior the Queen of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. There is uh, a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of hopes. Now again, the moon is back there, which it makes me think about illusions, delusions of, of and again, yeah, like it's, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little scary. There's, um, a lot of intensity, a lot of very dark, hidden emotions that are being stimulated, but at the same time are, are, are hidden and are being repressed. The Queen of Cups and then the Seven of Cups. Okay, there is some like manipulation here, some negative manipulation that I'm seeing. This is the, the recent past. So if we connect that to your the challenge, we, we see that in the past there was a strong effort with the Seven of Pentacles to try to, I'm hearing, manifest a certain result. And with the death and the devil being here, I feel like at the present moment, uh, that effort has still not bared the, the results wanted in the present moment because the great your greatest challenge is the death card and then the devil and uh well it's not uh things still have not materialized i'm hearing in the way that you would have wanted in the present moment which perhaps is giving someone is giving you the the feeling okay that something is over like it's over i feel like in the past maybe that was kind of felt with this queen of cups reminds me of the phone this is like um it's very dark do you see that so again a, a lot of things i feel uh reality being suppressed the moon is about dreams so i, I feel like here we have somebody that uh kind of got sucked into this like fairy tale or yeah a place and began to see things in 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 the way that they wanted them to, to be so there is a sense of again a, a little denial here but it's almost like that denial is okay or it's still safe because there still things are not completely clear. Meaning, you know, it may or may not be. There's that, there's this uncertainty here that somebody I'm hearing grabbed and held on to the uncertainty of uh, what is to come, which allowed them room, I'm hearing, to dream. And well, here in the present moment, uh, the, the, the death is here. It, something has ended. 
something has uh, something has ended for sure something is over and i feel like there is no denying it with the jack-o-lantern there head on fire i feel like this is causing some very strong intense emotions like anger and rage within somebody uh, a, a desire as well of revenge okay because i think that's the whole thing with the headless horsemen they're like out for revenge absolutely so this is about revenge as well so again there's just a cluster of negative uh, feelings of feeling wronged and 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 wanting to lash out and and with the devil it is all consuming I don't want to let this go. I don't want to let this go. No, I don't. I no, no. And I feel like there's somebody else here pleading like, please, please. It doesn't have to be this way. Maybe they're not saying that exactly. Do you see there's a man there on their knees pleading? So I, I feel like somebody is uh, for sure. It feels like losing control or at the verge of losing control at the present moment and um there is somebody i'm hearing on at the other end uh really hoping that things don't get out of hand show me the present moment show me the present moment show me the present moment We have the two of wands and is reversed. This is, wow, this is not, this is a, a block road. I'm hearing this is a block road. This is, this is blocking. There's, there is somebody blocking. There's somebody blocking another. Um, there is also somebody stalking. The reason I say that is because each card in the Edgar Allan Poe deck has a story, an Edgar Allan Poe story connected to it. And I actually read this one last night. I went to sleep a little bit late reading the book. And this is pretty, like, I'll tell you a little bit about the story here. Um, summarize it very quickly. This guy right there. Well, there's a guy, okay, that likes to hang out at like a... I don't know if it's a bar or it's some public place. And uh, that's kind of like his thing. He likes to watch people. Is this one over here? Let me get closer. That one back there with the hat. And um, he can, he recognizes everybody's facial expressions. And um, he, he, he just, he's used to seeing people's reactions and, um, this day he sees one particular man which is this one and they have a very different uh, expression on their face which is unlike any he has ever seen which draws him in so what this guy there the people watcher starts to do is he decides to follow this man around so yeah he stalks him so that's why i said for many of you there is stalking <laughs> going on here two of wands reverse this is as well somebody not accepting there is a choice the two of wands is a crossroads it's a choice all right so he, now you find yourself here let's say right there is an ending with the death card there's an ending so now where do you go from here and i feel like somebody is choosing where do i go there's like they're saying this where do i go from here i'm not going anywhere i'm not going anywhere two of wands two of wands yeah i'm not going anywhere where do i go from here there or there how about neither i'm going to stay right here two of wands and they're choosing not to uh do anything that's where we get this devil somebody's really holding on somebody is really refusing to let go and is uh, 
being in very defiant and is digging in their hooves and I'm hearing crossing their hands and saying, no, no, this is not going to happen. This is the present moment, the two of wands reverse. I'm also seeing this as like a barrier. I'm seeing a big log all of a sudden just fall and uh, land across on top, across a path which would block whoever is trying to go through. So this as well is creating obstacles. This is creating, yeah, this is creating obstacles in, uh, in, in your path, in somebody's path. Hold on guys, let me close the window. I have it open and there's some noise that I'm hearing and it's a, a little bit distracting. All right, I'm back cancer. That didn't take very long, did it? Yeah, so yeah, that's purposely creating blocks. This is blocking, uh, actually. This is crossing. Have you ever heard of being crossed, like uh, in a, uh, like being crossed? That's what it is, which means you're being opposed. Uh, there's opposition. There is uh, intentional blocks. There is a uh, person here choosing not to move, not to do anything. And again, stalking. Here we have the Queen of Pentacles. For many of you, this is a Taurus, a Virgo, a Capricorn. With the Queen of Pentacles. It doesn't have to be, guys. But here with this Queen of Pentacles, um, I'm seeing this as somebody that uh, feels... Let me read... Let me read the book. Actually, let me read. I f let me read what this says. This Queen of Pentacles. Let's read out of the book. Queen of Pentacles, where are you? <laughs> Here you are, I found you. Let's take a look at what this Queen of Pentacles says. In the story, The Spectacles, Napoleon learns that he will receive an inheritance from a distant relative. But first, he attends an opera and sees a beautiful woman. He describes her as grace personified and the beauty, what is it? Beautiful of my wildest and most enthusiastic vision. He gazed at his queenly apparition for at least half an hour and falls deeply, madly in love. Mind you, Napoleon needs glasses but refuses to wear them due to vanity. Napoleon learns that the woman is wealth is a wealthy widow named Madame Lalaine. Leland, I think that's how you say it, Leland. His friend introduces them and Napoleon proposes marriage. She accepts on one condition that Napoleon wear his spectacles on their wedding night. Napoleon soon discovers that his bride-to-be is 82 years old and missing a few teeth. She's also his great-great-grandmother. Oh my goodness. She has come to America to meet her husband's hair. Hair. Luckily, Madame Lalande uh, La, 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 brought Napoleon's cousin, whom Napoleon ends up marrying instead. After his <laughs> debacle, Napoleon promises never to be met without spectacles. In this image, Madame Lalande uh, is seen through Napoleon's eyes, stands inside an opera house. She holds a fan uh, featuring a large scarab, scarab? beetle indicating her wealth her ball gown boasts the colors red green and gold symbolic of endurance abundance and intelligence she appears young but her hair is silver symbolizing the maturity and wisdom that all queens possess okay so what to me what stands out about this <laughs> the most I guess we can say that this woman 
appears in a way that she's really not. Because Napoleon sees her as, I guess, this beautiful woman, but he's not wearing his glasses. And once he puts on his glasses, he realizes, oh my God, she pretty much is not what I was, she's not what I thought she was. She's she's not, she's an 80 something year old woman. So that is of significance, that is of importance, guys. Here we have an individual that perhaps, um, I wouldn't necessarily say they're choosing to a appear a certain way, but I do feel like somebody else has uh, mistakenly in some way or another um, viewed this queen of pentacles um, in the wrong way. It's like they're not who they say that they are. They are, they, they are not who they appear to be, this individual here. They're not who they appear to be. For many of you, this could be a very self, uh, this, there's a lot of self-interest here. I'm also getting for some of you there, like I'm hearing like gold digger simply for the fact that, I mean, this is the queen of pentacles. She does appreciate uh, the finer things, luxuries, comfort, but in the story, there's some sort of inheritance. Okay. And then right at the bottom of the deck, we have the hangman. And well, the hangman I'm seeing, do you see the hangman is all tied up and there's this blade there. And if you can imagine this blade is just swinging back and forth, back and forth. And if this hangman were to just slightly try, you know, to get up from there, well, there goes his head. So this is about being put in a very, in a, being put in a tough predicament. This is being put in a tough predicament, guys. At this very moment, this is what is happening. Somebody's being put in a, in a tough predicament. They're choosing not to do anything, which in a way is forcing another person to have to do something. Do you see that? I'm not doing anything, two of wands. I'm not doing anything. I'm comfortable here. We could say this is the queen of pentacles. I'm comfortable here. I like where it is that I, I am. Why do I have to make a choice? Why do I have to, you know, decide what to do? I act, you know what? I'm going to decide not to do anything. I'm going to decide not to go left and not to go right. I'm just going to stay right here because I'm very comfortable here. I like this. I like this arrangement. I like what is happening here. And for many of you, this queen of pentacles is the person that is having a really hard time with the death card. This is the one that says, I'm hearing this doesn't benefit me. This, I don't want this. I like being here. So the devil, I am going to hold on. And because I want to hold on, and because I know that, uh, well, this is, uh, this is ending, this is over, I'm going to fall back on some negative behavior patterns to ensure that, uh, well, no change happens. At least not the change I'm hearing that I want. And look, do you see? And it's putting this one over here, this hangman is putting somebody in a tough predicament. Do you see? It's putting this one in a tough per predicament because in a way this one has to move. Do you see how it goes? How here I said, there's no movement. Somebody's choosing not to do anything. So in a sense, it, um, th this is over. I mean, this is the one that wants it to be over. This hangman, there could be a Pisces for many of you, a Capricorn, a Scorpio. I mean, so they are left to make a move, but that's going to hurt them. 
Making a move is going to hurt them. Do you see? That's the present moment. So if somebody does, if this hangman does want to make a move, he knows that it's going to negatively impact him in some way. It is. But he also knows if he doesn't make a move, it's going, you see, damn if you, damn if you do and damn if you don't. Somebody's putting someone in a pickle and they're doing it on purpose. I believe the story, I can't remember all the story here, but this man was put there and was tied up. And uh, this blade here, it's getting lower and lower every time it swings back and forth. And eventually it will cut this hangman in half. But the person that trapped them there also gave them the uh, the possibility of escaping by tying their hands and uh, putting meat by his wrist that would attract, you see those mice, those rats, that would attract those rats. So that would be another way that they could escape but they would have to um, endure the pain of rats chewing through the rope on his wrist, which would mean that he would get his wrist just ripped apart by the, by the rats. So you see, either way, if you escape, you're gonna get hurt. And if you don't, well, if, I mean, they could, they could escape. I don't think, I don't think this one can escape unharmed. Again, it's like either way, you either go by the blade cutting you or um, you could bleed to death and go through so much uh, pain because of the rats. So you see, goodness gracious. Yeah, somebody's being put uh, in this type of predicament. Okay, you can get out of this but you're gonna have to go through this. You're gonna have to go through this. We go back to the vengeance, the death card, and then the devil. It's gonna hurt you. Oh, it's gonna hurt. But if you stay, oh my God, if they stay, might even, it, it, it'll be worse if they stay. It'll be worse if they stay. Because what did I say? This blade is going to continue to go down until it cuts this man in half. <sighs> Goodness, that's the present moment, guys. How is this going to be developing? How is this going to be developing and moving forward? So this is future. Let's take a look at the future. How is this going to be developing and moving forward? Here we go, we have the lovers. Let's get one more card. A choice needs to be made. That is the lovers. A head to heart decision, a tough decision. What do I do? The lovers. Whew. And then here we have the page of wands and there is a man that is running and there is an imp, a, a devil back there that is chasing him. Somebody's going to decide. Some With the lovers, it says somebody's going to make the, the best decision here with the lovers. And that decision, guys, is running away from this devil. They're going to run away. They're going to get away, Page of Wands. I'm leaving. And it's not going to be pretty, right? Look, I'm telling you, they stay, they stay or leave. It's it's bad. Either way. You see how the devil's chasing this guy? So this is this is somebody chasing another. Again, what did I say at the beginning? I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go. I'm gonna make you suffer. 
I'm going to torment you. I'm going to latch on to you. I'm going to possess you. I'm going to control you. I'm going to make you do what I want. I'm going to keep you here. You can't escape me. That's what the devil is saying. And then this person's like, I like, I'm, I gotta go. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I gotta go. And somebody doesn't, uh, well, continues to chase them. So this is the future, guys. I see, um, somebody still very reluctant to release and let go and accept an ending. I see that very same person chasing, giving, giving the other, uh, that, uh, is accepting that this is over and, and leaving. Um, I'm, I'm seeing the devil, okay, chase them around, give them a hard time chase them which is what it's like still pursuing them wanting them to i'm hearing control them they don't want to leave they don't want to leave them alone they don't want to leave them alone this is future this is how this is going to be developing with the lovers this is a this is about love guys there is somebody that uh, is choosing to leave a really abusive toxic situation relationship and uh, they're choosing a higher commitment with the lovers for many of you this is somebody from the past the six of cups this could also be you know somebody that you have like a really good friendship with this is somebody that is really hard to forget. This is somebody that is really hard to forget. This is a soulmate with the six of cups. That's what is happening here, guys. There is somebody choosing love. There is somebody choosing a soulmate. And pretty much what that means is that they're choosing to, I guess they're accepting the consequences of leaving of do of 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 their actions which is what is that devil that devil's not going to leave me alone that devil is not going to make this easy at all for me but i am going to try to get away because i am not going to stay stuck there that's even worse that's worse staying is worse I am leaving. I am running away. The lovers, I am choosing this higher commitment. I am choosing love. I'm choosing six of cups. Okay, my, my soulmate. Yeah, that is, wow. That is uh, how this is going to be developing, my dear Cancer. Let's get an oracle message for you, Cancer. If you want to book a reading with me, guys, you can do so by going to the link down below in the description box. It's going to take you to votrevoyagetarot.com where you could book a private reading with me. Let's use the Oracle of Shadows and Light. Wow. Did I tell you guys in the beginning, the energy felt so uh, high sprung that I could actually feel it. I could feel my body trembling. That is another level of rage, guys. That's another level of rage. That is somebody losing control and it's driving them wild. We have dried flower fairy sweet memories. That is connected to the number 11 is of significance. That's connected to the soulmate card, the six of cups, which they, they are memories, sweet memories. I feel like this is um, memories. Somebody is really, it's like memories, remembering sweet memories, good times are really carrying somebody through. I'm hearing the, the time that they spent with another, the memories that they made with, an, with another that are, you know, really sweet, are really helping, supporting, and encouraging, and just uh, 
helping someone out right now through through this mess sweet memories dry flower fairy yeah six of cups for many of you this is somebody from your past okay somebody well you know that uh there's history there a lot of sweet memories we have fairy of the divine hand intoxication distorted view overindulgence doesn't that go with that uh with the queen of pentacles what was that story she's not what she appears intoxication distorted view overindulgence yeah i feel like there's somebody here that is very obsessive again you know that's the devil card that we saw in the beginning a lot of negative feelings emotions that are overtaking them very very toxic and um i feel like this individual is just succumbing to these energies and it's so it's like they're feeding off of these negative energies and it's just so incredibly toxic distorted view they're not seeing clearly at this time they're not they're not seeing clearly they're seeing what they want to see and overindulgence i feel like this overindulgence is just representative of um extravagant behavior guys who is that is that kali i am kali from death comes rebirth absolutely this is uh this is a new beginning this this is an ending and a new beginning golly let's get one more card for you my dear cancer and let's get it from this deck over here cancer we have the moon was, wasn't I talking about the moon, telling you guys the Queen of Cups there, that moon in the back? <sighs> the moon, guys. There is uh, a lot of uh, suppressed, a lot of dark suppressed emotion. Somebody, I'm hearing living in a fantasy. A lot of illusions, delusions, a lot of distortions, a lot of fears. A lot of negative feelings, uh, intoxication. I'm hearing this drunkenness. This is the shadow very much being illuminated, being able to see, putting on those glasses like in that story and being able to see somebody's um, in a way that you have never seen before and it is disturbing this is what i have for you cancer thank you so much for allowing me to do this reading for you as always truly it was an honor and my pleasure you guys take care okay bye bye